word with regard to an issue that has been of great concern to all Americans over the past year. There has been no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russians or Trump and Russians, no collusion. I believe that I have provided all the material that he needs to conclude his investigations. For 11 months, they've had this phony cloud over this administration, over our government. One year of Watergate is enough. So we'll see what happens. You were talking yesterday, obviously, about some parallels between what Richard Nixon was saying in the right. throes of Watergate and what Donald Trump is saying now that four people that work for him or have worked for him uh, have uh, been arrested and charged by the independent uh, counsel. Right. And, uh, you know, you showed the clip of Richard Nixon 44 years ago last night in his State of the Union saying, and the investigation one year of Watergate is enough. And had the investigation of the special prosecutor, which was Leon Jaworski at that point, been ended, three weeks later, in February of 1974, a grand jury named Nixon as an unindicted co-conspirator, along with Haldeman and Ehrlichman and John mm -hmm. Mitchell and others. So wouldn't have been a great time to end that investigation. So uh, some people are saying that what we're watching is actually a slow motion Saturday night massacre. And, um, you know, it's very interesting. Everybody talks about how stupid uh, Donald Trump, uh, Trump's advisors are, you may have brought this up, it seems like they have gone to school on Nixon and Watergate, and they are actually doing the slow burn instead of firing everybody in one night. Well, it sure looks like that, and we know that in his entourage he has people who were involved at that time. Roger Stone worked for Richard Nixon for decades. I don't know if he has given that kind of advice. In fact, I think he has said in public that it would be a mistake, for instance, for the president to talk to Robert Mueller, and right. presumably he'd be in favor of this. So I think it probably is a, a slow motion effort to fire Mueller. And that's what the context, I think, of last night will be in history, because if all that happens, you know, if we're talking about the State of the Union of address of 2018, probably we'll think of it as a, a prelude to uh, Trump's efforts to close down this investigation that what turns out to be less slow motion so fast as you were saying earlier right. you know he can't even get out of the house chamber without telling a member of congress that yeah. he's 100 percent behind releasing that report that, that may lead to the read. firing uh, of rosenstein uh susan page with that as a backdrop what did you think of the president's speech last night you know I th he did not follow the nixon script in terms of talking about the elephant in the room during the State of the Union. He, the President Trump did not mention the Russia investigation. And I think it's possible that when we look back on the speech, that aside, that spontaneous comment to Congressman Jeff Duncan as he was leaving may turn out to be more important. If the President in the next few days moves ahead and approves the release of this controversial memo from the House Intelligence Committee, that is going to ignite just one more firestorm. And if he reaches an agreement with the special counsel in the next few days for his own testimony, that is going to wash away everything we're talking about in terms of the content of the speech that he read off the teleprompter last night. Mm -hmm. John. It's just kind of an extraordinary, Michael, it's an extraordinary thing, you know, look, going back and looking at Nixon's speech in 74, when he says the thing, one year of Watergate is enough, and then we know six, nine months later he's resigning, John. right? Um, the big difference, I mean, you, people compare the two investigations, domestic abuse of power in Nixon's case and in Trump's case. Um, the difference with the Russian collusion thing is a different dimension. But it seems to me the fundamental difference is you had Republicans back in 1974 who were willing to go down to the White House and say to Richard Nixon, time to go. Absolutely. It, look at the Republicans now. And, and, and to just talk a little bit about the difference between Republicans now and then and why there's so much difference between the Republicans and what they see as their institutional responsibilities or lack of responsibilities today than 40 years ago? Well, what the Constitution basically says is that if a president misbehaves, you know, members of Congress have to go above party and above self-interest and in the House decide whether this person should be put on trial and then later on if there's a Senate trial, see if he has uh, committed high crimes and misdemeanors. And there was a lot of that in 1974. There hadn't been an impeachment since 1868, Andrew Johnson. They took this really seriously. Democrats on the Judiciary Committee, after they voted for Nixon's impeachment, July of 1974, including the chairman, Peter Rodino, they went backstage and cried 
I mean, they, this was not just a show. They realized how important this was. And there were, as you say, in the minority at that po point, uh, mainly moderate Republicans, but not only moderate Republicans, who said, you know, with a heavy heart, I love Richard Nixon, I've supported him for years, but I cannot bring myself to right. vote against his impeachment. So, Susan Page, the, by Trump's standards, it was a, a more uplifting speech than his mm -hmm. previous speeches. If you look at his inaugural, it was about American carnage. This was about an American <laughs> moment. He talked about unity. But as I said earlier, you can't just take what he says for an hour and 15 minutes or so in a vacuum, as though the previous year and 11 days hadn't happened. This has not been a unifying president in any respect. Do you think there were people in that room who took some heart in what he said, or are they too calloused by what they know he's really been about for the last year? I think it, things are pretty set with yeah. President Trump. You know, one of the things that we've talked about is the fact that his approval rating is the lowest of any modern president at this point in his presidency. The other thing we should note is that his approval rating is more stable than any other modern president. You know, people starting about last March made up their minds in large part about President Trump. And we've got, uh, you know, about 37 percent of Americans who are sticking with him. We've got about 55 percent of Americans who have decided they disapprove of him. And that has not been shaken by just about about anything that's happened. Americans are watching, I think, what the president does, not what he says. And that is one of the factors that makes these big speeches just less influential.